tell everybody you might have heard that there was a convicted child you know what offender on mr beast staff and girl come to find out he was a manager and he was there early on and all kind of stuff and also if you watch my video yesterday come to find out that convicted you know what is a family member of another former mr beast employee that other former mr beast employee was named jake the viking franklin is his last name and girl come to find out and this like i said yesterday in the video this was all public record so it wasn't like so it wasn't like i found some type of proprietary information i mean i'm sure sure like i said in the video yesterday because i just started following this story i don't know jake the viking from adam until a couple days ago so it did not come as a surprise to me that other people of the 300 million subscribers to that channel had heard about this before and it had been addressed before so like i said in my video yesterday i assumed that other people had found some of this information out it's really only been the last two weeks that jimmy james mr beast donaldson has even been on my radar so when I say in a video, I haven't seen anybody talking about this, it means literally exactly that. I'm not saying that nobody is talking about it. Nobody has talked about it. When I say I haven't seen anybody talking about it, it means I've watched a collection of videos and in those videos, I haven't seen anybody talking about it, okay? When I say that, it's just a point to y'all's attention that I haven't seen anyone talking about this and I came across it in another way. Like for example, in a video where they admit that they're brother-in-laws or in another video where they admit that they're brother-in-laws that I haven't seen anybody talking about. These videos have millions of views, so I'm sure that there have been many, many people talking about this over the years. So I just want to be very clear. I'm not trying to say like, oh, I got the proprietary tea here. I don't. I'm just looking at the public record and doing a little commentary. Okay. Well, not to bury the lead or anything, but Jake the Viking Franklin, he has now come out and addressed this situation about the brother-in-law. Now remember, Jake the Viking was a former Mr. Beast employee, but also has been highly critical of Mr. Beast, the Enterprise, and of Ava Chris Tyson and the allegations against Ava Chris. So the Viking has been highly vocal on Twitter about this scandal or incident. I mean, I hesitate to call it a scandal. It seems like it's allegations of criminal activity, but he's been very vocal. He's been very critical. Okay. And a big part of what he's been critical about are the allegations and frankly, the receipts against Ava Chris having to do with the contacts with minors and the inappropriate conversations with them and, you know, inappropriate actions with people who are under the age of majority, as it were. Well, this led a lot of people to start asking Jake the Viking, well, what about your brother-in-law actually? And there's even this, I'll put it up here right now, this purported tweet from Ava Chris that seems to be implying that there were family members of people who were being protected and you can know people by the company they keep. Now y'all, there's a whole entire side plot about knowing people by the company they keep and Ava Chris. Well, I guess uh, Jake the Viking Franklin, he just couldn't take it anymore because right at exactly the same moment that my video was premiering about all these allegations about his brother-in-law and the registry and the offender and the hip Jake the Viking was tweeting. He was tweeting his response and he was posting it. Without further ado, let's see what Jake the Viking Franklin has to say for himself and his brother-in-law. Now, if I'm Jake the Viking's PR consultant or his PR manager, what I'm telling Jake the Viking is to just shut the hell up. I'm telling him don't tweet about it, don't mention it, don't acknowledge it. Unless you're, you know, under penalty of perjury or something and you're subpoenaed and you have to answer this, just don't answer it. If you're going to make a public statement at all, you definitely shouldn't make a public statement defending the person. And that's exactly what just happened. Whew, let's read it. He says, here's the truth. Okay, we're waiting for the truth. Yes, Delaware is my brother-in-law. So they're still kind of protecting him by calling him Delaware. His name is Charles Robert Jefferson. So that's whenever he puts Delaware in here, he's talking about Charles Robert Jefferson. Yes, Charles Robert Jefferson is my brother-in-law. He is a registered S offender. When he was 21, a 16 year old girl, I don't know why we needed to know these ages. It's almost like deliberate obfuscation. It's almost deliberate because it's almost making it look like something happened whenever his friend was 21 and the girl was merely 16. But that's not, that's not what happened. It's a little bit tricky if you ask me. What happened was she was 11. Let me pull up the receipt. She was 11. He was 16. Okay. So remember, remember back in your life when you were 16, maybe you had a little brother, maybe you had a little sister. 
right? Maybe you had a little cousin. Maybe your your aunt and uncle had a baby or something that was five years younger than you, but you were 16. You were maybe a junior in high school. Maybe you were applying to college. Maybe you were taking the SAT, the ACT. Maybe you were shopping for your prom dress. Okay. Maybe you're doing something like that. And now I want you to remember when you were 16, what an 11 year old, 11 year old child. Most people hadn't started by 11 years old girl I mean he was 16 you know like varsity football age and she wasn't old enough to be in middle school so I mean girl I, I, so there I fixed it Jake okay but he says when he was 21 when Charles Robert Jefferson was the RSO the offender the pled guilty the pled guilty to doing this he pled guilty he said, yes, I am guilty. Yes, I understand my rights. Yes, I understand I'm entitled to a trial. I'm guilty. He pled guilty to this charge. What is the charge? R in the fourth degree, intercourse with a seven-year-old. He pled guilty to that. Okay. So look how this fool, this buffoon is on Twitter trying to frame that after he's been talking about Jimmy New. <laughs> Woo, sir. Yes, Charles Robert Jefferson is my brother-in-law. Yes, he is a registered offender. When he was 21, a 16-year-old girl accused him and others of S.A. when she was 11, okay? So she accused people when she was 11. Who were the and others? I did look for the case. I looked for the documents and I can't find them. I think they got them hidden. I sure do. Now, what's really alarming is it looks like they're trying to get this record expunged, which means that none of us are going to be able to tell it exists anymore, which I think is abhorrent. Charles took a plea deal. That's why there was no jail time, but he still had to register. So that tells me that they were telling him, we have evidence. You're going to go to prison. So we can skip all this. You can plead guilty and you cannot go to prison because you know what happens to you know what's in prison. So he took this plea deal. Now, a lot of people say, well, that means he's guilty. Well, that means he's, you know, innocent. He didn't want to get in. He pled guilty. He admitted guilt. That is what a plea deal means. He admitted 11 year old. Okay. Then he talks about his nickname. I don't care. Okay. He was hired before I was. Okay. So the PDF was on staff before Jake the Viking. Good to know. It was actually the reason I got hired. Okay, so the PDF got Jake the Viking hired. So that would make sense why Jake the Viking now feels like he needs to defend him. I mean, before being hired, Charles Robert Jefferson sat down with Jimmy and Sue. We all know who Sue is. If you don't, I, I need to make my playlist now because it's my third Mr. Beast video. Sue is Jimmy's mom. Okay, and it's largely believed, and it was reported in Time Magazine in a special feature, that this woman is kind of a little bit of the brains behind the operation and a little bit of the enforcer. Sue, Jimmy's mom, is a former lieutenant colonel in the Army, and she was the first female prison warden at the only Department of Justice military prison in Europe. And that was her job. So she is a prison warden type and she has complete and total control as far as what it seems like in the public record of all of Jimmy's fortune and Jimmy's personal finances. He doesn't have access to his bank accounts. He said as recently as I think February of this year and Sue. So Sue, she's, she's really the, the one she wears the pants in the Mr. Beast operation, it seems. So before being hired, this man sat down with Sue and Jimmy, and apparently, we're being told in this tweet, apparently the PDF on the registry sat down with Jimmy and Sue, and Sue is this born-again Christian type, and explained to them everything. So made excuses, it seems. He pled guilty, but he seems like he made excuses. So yes, Jimmy knew. But again, this incident happened in 2010. No, it didn't. And I want to I want to be very clear. Um, this incident did not happen in 2010. This incident happened in 2004. And six years later, let me pull up the, I don't have to blur this out. This is, I could have picked any one. I could have picked the National. I could have picked the Delaware. And I could have picked the North Carolina. But this one was the most convenient. This is the North Carolina S Offender and Public Protection Registry. And this is for public protection. This is for public safety. Because it seems like we can't really get the truth around here. But um, look at look at down here. Conviction information. The offense date whenever he was 16 years old. And this was 11-year-old child. Was August 20th. 2004. 
Okay. The conviction date was April 21st, 2010. The conviction date. Okay. So it does go to show that Jake, the so-called Viking, does not have a good or a strong sense of what actually happened. He's so blinded by his loyalty to his family that he's not actually bothering to have the facts right. And some of y'all might be saying, well, who cares really, you know, BJ, if he has the facts right on what year it happened, the point remains, you know, that what he did and when he did it maybe is immaterial. Sure. I think so. I think when he did it, if it was 2004, 2010, doesn't matter. He was 16. She was 11. For me, this is a spectrum, okay? Like, I know that some people think like one moment under the age of 18 is exactly the same of zero days old. But for me, it's very different. For me, it's 11-year-old and 16-year-old. That is, that is, I remember being 16. You're like a miniature adult. Now, does this, that does not mean that somebody 22 should be taking advantage of you either. But when you're 16, you're starting to become a young adult. And when you're 11, you are a full-blown child, okay? Uh, so what this tells me is that he's blinded by bias. He's not being careful and using due diligence to think about what the truth is and think about what the reality is and what the facts are. Now, devil's advocate girl, he might be lying. He might lie on purpose. I, I don't think so. I think he just got it wrong. I think he just doesn't know. I think he just never bothered to go research. He's just taking hearsay. So what else does he go on to say? Charles Robert Jefferson was hired in 2017, 2018. He was also let go from the company before I was. Charles Robert Jefferson was supposed to be a behind the scenes manager, but in a couple videos, he was asked to partake because we needed people. Okay, ding, ding, ding. A clue, a clue. This is very important to me, why? Because the video, the first video that I was able to see that Charles Robert Jefferson participated in on Mr. B's channel, it was a video called Destroyed Friend's House and Bought Him a New One. And in this video, they're destroying a house and they're replacing and replacing things in the house, like the dryer and the whatever, you know, stuff like that. Now, yesterday I did make the speculation that they were using a pre-planned home renovation as a business expense by making a video out of it. And I had a suspicion that this house didn't actually belong to Delaware, aka Charles Robert Jefferson, that actually maybe it belonged to Mr. Beast or his mama or Chris Tyson or somebody. And they were just kind of like making a video so they could write off some of these expenses as business expenses. And then at the end of the video, toward the end of the video, Jimmy hands over a bunch of his business cards to the PDF and says, go to the store and buy new stuff or whatever. Obviously, we're not buttholes, so uh, anything we destroyed, we're gonna buy you something two times better. So I can take her shopping. Mm hmm. Have fun. But we have a lot of business cards because we spend a lot of money. We have a lot of business cards. There's about six of them, they each have a $5,000 limit, so have fun. <laughs> Meredith, you ready to go shopping? Okay. So he's using these home renovations as business expense. But if you look at this tweet right here, it's saying he was asked to partake in videos because we needed people. So are you admitting that you needed someone to stand in there and pretend like it was their house, even though it actually wasn't? He was reluctant, the PDF, especially in the straight jacket video because of his charges. And that's why he wore the mask. Now that's interesting to me too, because from what I was able to ascertain, this man was in three videos. He was in the destroying the house, pretending like that was his house. He was in, I spent 24 hours in prison and he was in, I spent 24 hours in an insane asylum. Okay. So I thought it would be very obvious that the one he would be the most uncomfortable with would be, I spent 24 hours in prison. Because in that video, they're talking about what would you go to jail for if you went to jail and laughing about crimes and stuff. And this man was on the registry. He was on the registry, had been for at least seven, eight years at that time, maybe, maybe more. So this man on the registry said that the thing he had the most issue with was the straight jacket. I, I don't know why that would be what he had the most issue with. It might also be that that was the most recent video and he started realizing how big the channel was and how people were probably going to figure out who he was, which people did do. Yeah. So anyway, he starts wearing a mask to literally conceal what he had done, conceal his identity. We're being told, yes, if you speculated that the man wore a mask because he was hiding his identity and trying to cover up, then yeah, you, you were right. Mm -hmm. Now, Delaware's charges are set to be dropped this fall. Huh? How could charges be dropped when the man already said he was guilty and put his hand on a Bible and, and did all that? 
What I think this could mean, what I think it could mean, is that maybe he's going to be removed from the registry or maybe his juvenile record would be expunged. The only way that I could see that a charge was set to be dropped is if somehow like a law might have changed or something, but I really, I really don't think a law has changed. I think this means he's going to be taken off the registry. Now this starts to make me wonder, are these little like false statements false on purpose? It starts to make me wonder, is it maybe not an accident that this man is saying wrong stuff? Is it maybe not an accident that he's saying, oh, it happened in 2010? Because in 2010, he would have been 21 and the girl would have been 16, which does, in my opinion, seem better. It's still, you need to go to jail, conservatorship or jail. The man never went to jail for this. He never served time for this. I'm starting to wonder, are these accidental misunderstandings of the facts or is it intentional false statements. I don't know. I mean, I wasn't there. I, like I said, I don't know this man, but he's trying to tell me the charges are set to be dropped, which can't happen. I don't, I don't understand how that could happen. Maybe he could come explain that. I mean, a lot of people have this question. Charles Robert Jefferson has been nothing but a good person. Well, that's, that's impossible. It's impossible because at the very least, Charles Robert Jefferson, when he was a full grown adult at 21 years old, admitted and told a judge that he had intercourse with somebody of the age of 11 years old when he was 16. So at the very extreme least, he was lying about that. And he's the type of person who would lie and admit to doing something so egregious. So at the very least, he hasn't been nothing but a good person. So false. An amazing husband to my sister. Couldn't speak on that. And the best father. Y'all, he got two little daughters. To my two nieces that I could ever ask for. I, I hope that whenever they're 11 years old, nothing like resurfaces in his mind. Okay, that's what I'll say. They want no part in this. Well, I bet they don't. But that is the risk that you do take whenever you marry a RSO. I'm sorry, that is the risk you take. And they just want to live their lives away from the limelight. Well, they shouldn't have been on a channel. They shouldn't have been on a channel with their faces not blurred out on videos that has 43, 48, however many million views. You just got to pick one. You can't have the benefits of the limelight and then decide you don't want the consequences of the limelight. I understand why anyone would be upset and frustrated over these allegations. And I do not blame them. Well, then when you wrote this sentence, you should have backspaced the whole thing and went about your day, buddy. Because now look what you done did. Hurting kids in any way is completely unacceptable. But in the case of Charles Robert Jefferson, I firmly believe he did nothing wrong. Ugh. Brother, ugh. What's that, brother? He firmly believes Charles Robert Jefferson did nothing wrong, even though he pled guilty to the fourth degree R intercourse with 11 year old. He pled guilty. He admitted he did it. So, so in my linguistic opinion, that means this sentence means one of two things. It either means Jake the Viking is saying, I don't believe he did that. I don't believe he did it. I don't believe he did it. I think it's lies that he did it at all, the action of the 16, 11, whatever, which means he's calling the 11 year old that grew up to be a 16 year old, a liar. And he's calling his own friend, Charles Robert Jefferson, a liar, because he's saying, I don't think he did anything wrong. He would be calling Charles Robert Jefferson a liar by saying, I don't think he did it because Charles Robert Jefferson already said he did do it. Okay. The only other thing I guess that it could mean is I know he did it. I know he was 16 with an 11 year old. And I don't think that was wrong. What is he saying? He's saying that the 11 year old that turned into a 16 year old is lying just for fun. Lying so good, lying so good that this guy pled guilty without a trial. Or you know that it happened and you don't think it was wrong. Either way, this should have stayed in the drafts. Actually, you should have deleted the draft. Look forward to the day the charges are dropped. It's they not getting dropped. This is false. Maybe I'm mistaken, but but there's no dropping charges for something you admitted to doing, stupid. Now, people are very, very upset and offended. I want to read some of the responses people had. Some things that people were saying in response to this. The fake TB says, The hypocrisy of you speaking out about how awful of a person Chris was for doing the same stuff as the person you're now praising is just saddening. If you genuinely cared for the protection of young people, 
you would keep the same energy regardless of the person. And I would say, look, listen, not that I'm a Ava Chris Tyson defender by any means. I hope that person gets what they deserve. But this isn't even the same stuff as Chris because what I saw from Chris, Ava Chris, Ava Chris did not admit to doing anything wrong. Ava Chris said, mm -mm, I did not groom. No, I didn't. This person, Charles Robert Jefferson, he admitted it. He pled guilty, put his hand up and said, I understand my rights. I understand I'm waiving my right to a trial and everything else. Anthony says, nah. LMAO. This MF was on Mr. B's daily just to find out he kept the secret. I cannot. Now, to be fair, I don't think that he kept the secret. There are some tweets from, I didn't know about these at the time that I made my video yesterday, but there are some tweets from 2018 that, um, Jay did admit this. He has admitted this. ZJ Majowski said, oof, your whole credibility is now tarnished. Should have stayed away from the conversation if you had those kind of skeletons in the closet. God damn, y'all had a whole squad of weirdos, Big Brother Thunder said. Oroku said, you need to clarify why the charges are being dropped. I agree with that. What is this charges drop thing? Because, I mean, I went to law school. I'm not an expert on this. I did go to law school. I never heard of somebody pleading guilty and 15 years later, the charges are dropped, girl. I think it's a conviction at this point. Jay says, when it's family, it's different, huh? Can't play both ways, man. Holly said, quote, I firmly believe he did nothing wrong. So do you think she was lying? Or do you approve of S.A.? Just wondering. And that's that's what I was saying with that sentence at the end, where I firmly believe he did nothing wrong. It either means that you don't think he did it at all, or you think he did do it, and it wasn't wrong. So clarify. I would like a clarification. If you're going to open your big mouth, I wasn't asking for nothing at first. But if you're going to open your big mouth and say something anyway, I mean, I do want to know what this charges drop thing is. I do not think that's true. That is a load of words to say you're a hypocrite. So when he was 16 years old, he had inappropriate contact with 11 year old. Is that accurate? Yes, Jay. Anderson says the truth always comes out. Good post, Jake. Red bearded ninja said this should be all the drama pages needed. People better start correcting wrong info. Dot said, you are one of the few going all out attacking Mr. Beast on absolutely every little detail. But as soon as it happens to be someone you know, it's just, I trust he's a good man. Hypocrite. Darth Potato said, oh, uh, he took a plea deal. If you're innocent, that's not something you take. Secondly, you never hire someone who has a case going against them for harming a child when your content is marketed toward children. Cam said, you're still a hypocrite though. Soldier said, why did he take a plea deal? Mickey said, yeah, nah, I don't GAF about the person he is now. He did with a minor. If we had any sort of common sense left, we would all as a society agree. Oh, mm -hmm. Jody says, Mr. Beast knowingly hired S predators to sell videos and garbage to children. You understand that's what you said? You understand that's what you said? It does kind of look like that. It does kind of look like that. And I feel like it's not looking good for Mr. Beast. I mean, you're telling me he knew him and Sue both. They sat down and they were like, oh, it's okay that you, you did that to 11 year old and you pled guilty to it. Rational Chad said, if you were on the S offender register, it seems pretty obvious you should not be participating in a YouTube show primarily aimed at children. At best, this is grossly negligent oversight from Mr. Beast. Why didn't you flag this up or did you or were ignored? Well, I don't think he flagged it up. And he said that he got the job because the PDF had the job already. Jessica said, when you say the charges are set to be dropped, is that because he took a lesser charge in the plea deal that falls off his record after a certain time? I think that's FBE Capital said, look, if this was an isolated incident, it would be weird and bad enough. But you got the Chris grooming, the Discord mess, the drawing of Keemstar's eight-year-old daughter, the CP art from Shadman, plus now an actual RSO. Bro, at what point is this just a nasty bunch? I'm going through my screenshots right now. And this is one thing that's kind of tangentially related. The Rosanna Pensino person, the one who has been exposing Mr. Beast for the cheating at the game, like the, you know, rigging the games and stuff. She says, I've heard rumors from people working close with Mr. Beast that he's hiring PIs to investigate those speaking up against him. Thank you to the people who reached out to warn me and others. I now have confirmation from several people that individuals are indeed being offered money to fabricate stories about me and others. And this has happened to me. This has happened to me where um, other people were approached. I now have the email evidence to fabricate stories about me, not in, in relation to the Mr. Beast story. This was months ago. What I will say is all this stuff about Mr. Beast is hiring people PIs to investigate and all that. I, first of all, I don't think that's actually even true. Maybe they've hired a couple to investigate a couple of the big accounts. I think this is a scare tactic. I've seen this with the, the evangelical cult 
before where they act like they're going to hire PIs and what they they do sometimes hire PIs, but what they what the PIs are doing is just stalkers. They're just following you around. And um, I'm gonna tell y'all if you ever find yourself in a situation where you're being threatened, this is this unsolicited advice from somebody who's been doing this for a long time. I've been doing this a long time. I know I don't have as many subscribers as some people, but I've been doing this a long time and I know how this goes now. Okay. If anybody ever threatens to investigate you, my advice, what I'd tell them, go for it. Have fun. Oh, they're going to leak your address. Go for it. You could probably find anybody's address by just a simple Google people finder search. That, that, that this is just scare tactics, y'all. Now, if you are the type of person in your past, in your life, you've done some criminal activities, especially in particular against children or something, maybe you should not be the one out here trying to call people out for stuff. But it is just a scare tactic. It's just a scare tactic. What they're going to find, they're going to, I mean, because because for me, I hope the PIs are looking. I've been having PIs looking into me for three years. They didn't find nothing. But this is a scare tactic. This is a scare tactic. So what? Offered money to fabricate stories about me and others. People, yeah. Yeah. There was a whole gang of people employed, it seems, to sit around and make videos about me, to sit around and talk about me, to lie about me, to say I told them to do things. And then the person tried to sue me and all that. But listen, y'all, we got to remember where we live. Okay. This is the United States of America. The very first amendment of our constitution is the freedom of speech. Do not contact anybody mentioned in these videos, but you're allowed to talk. And if somebody wants to spend their money and their attention and their energy following you around and investigating you, then girl, you made it. Congratulations. Congratulations. You've made it. You got to be in the position to speak truth to power out here. And that's why I just wanted to address. I don't care. I, I think it's, I think it's all fake. Okay. I, I don't think it's real. I don't think any PIs are investigating people. I think it's to stop people from talking about things. I've seen Lou Taylor do similar things where it's like, oh, ooh, cease and desist, cease and desist. And then whenever it came time to do depositions, she wouldn't show up. So, and then here's some of the things that Jake was saying, right? Confirm Weddle's opening comments. When I was fired by Mr. Beast, his mom, Sue, asked me several times to delete my social medias. I told her, no, I use my Instagram for modeling and acting. Then there was an email that came out about, you know, Mr. Beast uh, company is now, I'll do a separate video on that, but an email was leaked to the controlled opposition. Feral tomboy, amen Jesus, said this whole post is a cope. In an attempt to shield your sister from the wave that's coming, this is the risk she took when she chose to marry a man who's an ass offender. Delete your account. Ava, who was never convicted, quote, disgusting. My brother, who was convicted of messing with 11-year-old, did nothing wrong. L-M-A-O. What a goofball you are. He did nothing wrong. I want to say this clearly as I can. Fuck you, bitch. You deserve this for running your trap for months. Registered as offender for 14 years, but sure, the charges will apparently drop later this year after he got exposed. Amazing. You're a hypocrite. And so far, it seems you're every bit as guilty of enabling protecting PDF files as Jimmy. Of course he's innocent. They always innocent. Yo, what the... Doesn't matter what your opinion on him is. Okay, this is the best tweet of the whole thing. Annoying pink. This sums it up. The whole video could be this. <laughs> Doesn't matter what your opinion on him is. He's still a registered as offender working for a company, catered to children. One more time for the people in the back. Doesn't matter what your opinion on him is. He is still a registered offender working for a company catered to children. The call always comes from inside the house. This whole thing is gonna be the craziest doc one day. This entire situation feels like a dream. It must be difficult to accept, but a plea deal means conviction. It is so hard to prove S offenses beyond a reasonable doubt and being registered is a serious impact to life and always justify the cost. The charges are not getting dropped. He's been convicted and he is guilty. I thought anyone on the registry always had to go by their full and real life name online to make sure people were aware and able to immediately look up and find out about it. Mar Solomon said, if he took a plea deal, that means they had hard evidence he assaulted the child. Why are you acting like the allegations were false? Your brother admitted to a child and then went on to have unlimited access to children through Mr. Beast. You see nothing wrong with this? And then Mr. Vale said, here's what Jake the Viking and anyone who thinks that removing him from the registry is an exoneration of guilt. Having your name removed from a registry is not indicative of innocence, nor does it exonerate guilt. Charles Jefferson, Jake's brother-in-law, was found guilty of R in the fourth degree of an 11-year-old child. He did the crime and claimed guilt and ownership of it. 
Him being on or off the list or forthcoming to Jimmy and Sue, that doesn't mean he isn't guilty. He is on that list because he stood in front of a judge under oath pleaded guilty to R in the fourth degree of an 11-year-old child. The reasoning for him to be in front of the camera is irrelevant because he shouldn't have even been employed at Mr. Beast. And ignoring the fact that Charles Jefferson pled guilty to R of the fourth degree of an 11-year-old child, there is a whole other moral argument to be had about Mr. Beast giving and renovating employees' houses and cars using company money and then writing it off, Jake Weddle excluded because he's the only one to come out and speak about how his experience was getting a prize from Mr. Beast as a Mr. Beast employee. Now let's get back to being a normal, rational person. Now let's get back to being a normal, rational person and not ignore the fact that Charles Jefferson pled guilty to the R in the fourth degree of an 11-year-old child. He was directly involved in a company that sole target demographic audience is children. They hired Charles Jefferson knowing he had pled guilty to the bleep in the fourth degree of an 11-year-old child. In what world do you live in that you think anyone can rationalize hiring anyone who is on the registry, let alone someone who pled guilty, admitting it to the crime of R, an 11-year-old child, when the company's main audience is children. Anybody stupid enough to think they have a defense for this? Please preface your post to an answer with this question. Would you let someone who pled guilty to the R in the fourth degree of an 11-year-old child, would you let that person babysit your children? Tom says, Jake the Viking constantly tweeting about how Mr. Beast knew about Chris Tyson being a creep, only for it to come out that his own brother-in-law who worked for Mr. Beast is a literal S offender, which Jake knew, is so funny. Yeah, absolutely insane. The most stones and glass houses thing I've ever seen occur in real life. Jake the Viking knew that his brother-in-law was an offender and committed a crime against someone under the age of 12. Jake has been very vocal about the Ava Chris Tyson situation. It's not looking good. I think, again, TLDR, I think he should have just piped down on this one and kept that to himself. But now it's all out there. It's got 3 million impressions or something on a 2.7 million impressions on Twitter. And I don't think it's going to be slowing down anytime soon. That's all I really had for today. In the meantime, facts ain't defamation. Love you, me to get back. Backtrack. And you should have kept the name out your mouth as we go how it all turns.